to say if I can understand and interpret it clearly, whichever yeah. country, the five English speaking countries that you will go to, one of them, okay, yeah. when they speak with you or they are having a conversation with you, you should be exactly. able to understand, comprehend, and respond. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. exactly. All right. What they are saying, I need to understand. Yes, this person is saying this thing, then I'm able to answer them okay. in All their right. language. Okay. Anything else? Any other thought anybody has on listening? Why ILTS is assessing you on listening skills? One of the modules. The I, I main, reason, main reason is that how we respond uh, after listening, how we are responding to them. Okay. So again, it would be understanding, comprehension, yeah. and then the response. And, uh, yeah. And response. Okay. Yes, Raja? Uh, same, same opinion, ma'am. Okay. It's very important to understand people, and listening is a very important module in uh, any language. So, uh, if we are moving to uh, other countries, so especially English speaking countries, so uh, listening is a very important module uh, to understand people. Okay. okay, great. Now, it's a very simple module, I would say. Out of the four modules of ILTS, that is speaking, listening, writing, and reading. Speaking and listening are the easiest of the module. You can get a full nine band in both these modules. Okay, provided, provided you listen well and you speak well. Okay, this is the only criteria that is there. Okay. Now, how does the pattern and the structure work? It's very simple. Okay, Varun, can you hear me? Varun, are you there on the call? Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, hi, Varun. Yeah, hi, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, ma'am. I can okay. hear you. Yeah. Rohit, what about you? So, I'm going to... Everybody, can you see the whiteboard? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. So, I'm going to explain to you the structure of the listening skills module. Okay? Listening skills is a 30 minutes test. All right? Now, people who are giving a paper based test, they get extra 10 minutes to transfer their answers from the question paper to the answer sheet. Okay? But okay. people who are giving computer based tests, they get only two minutes. They don't get extra 10 minutes. So, ma'am, uh, sorry for interruption. Uh, which test we need to give? Which is the best? Paper based or computer based? Okay, it is upon the student's comfort level. Okay? The only uh, thing is, uh, some of them don't like to write, they like to type. All right, so they feel more comfortable typing the answers, typing the essays, and some of them they, they think that you know writing is more uh, what do you call comfortable, so they give the writing test. Otherwise, uh, the pattern is the same, the structure is the same, the questions are the same, the evaluation method is same, everything is same. There's so one, what, one more difference. Yeah, one more difference is there. That in computer based, you get your results in five days, and in paper based, it takes 12 to 13 days. So, ma'am, uh, like you have a good experience in the teaching even. So, yeah. what do you suggest? Uh, like, uh, we should go for paper based or computer based? Okay, so if you ask my personal opinion, all right, okay, uh, the writing and the reading section, all right. I feel when you're writing, your thought flows better when you're writing an essay, okay? Okay. Uh, while typing, uh, your the, the, the thought process or the, what you want to say may not be, this is a personal opinion, okay? Okay. Yeah, it may not be. And one more thing uh, that happens in um, reading is when you get the question paper, you can underline. Whatever is important on a in a paper based, you can do that in computer based also. The only thing is you're not able to underline; you're able to highlight it. 
and then you oh. have this screen one side you'll have the passage one side you'll have the questions okay so what happens is if you're good at it then it it works very very well but if your orientation is not good like you know look at the passage then look at the question look at the question then look at the passage then that little bit discomfort happens these are the only things that are there nothing else okay, okay. okay. that's why i said it's the comfort level of an individual what are they good at or what they feel comfortable doing okay okay now listening has four parts okay the first part that is part 1 is a conversation between two people okay and you will get 10 questions to answer here all right now the total number of questions that you will get in your listening test is 440 and these are objective type questions okay so the first when i say the first part is a conversation between two people that means they will play a recording where there will be two people talking on that call and the conversation would be on a general topic now general topic would be like suppose if i want to go on a holiday and i'm calling a travel agency and i'm asking for some information okay so i'm asking question the travel agency is giving me the answers so the questions that you will get in front of you the 10 questions will be based on the conversation between those two people about the travel plan am i clear on this everybody yes yeah. you are yeah yes so ma'am yes this is what we call as a general conversation it could also be general in terms of a student calling a university and there is a form filling that is happening the student is asking uh, the person on the other side from the university is asking certain details of the student the student is giving the answer so your question is going to be based on that so that's what we know call as general conversation okay part 2 part 2 would be a monologue monologue any idea what is a monologue person speaking about a topic like specific topics yeah, yeah but but how a single person yeah a single a person, person. Yeah. yeah that yeah. means only one person okay giving some information so you will have 10 questions around it all right yeah somebody uh, child is uh, can someone please mute yeah look at it somebody's child is speaking so please go on mute yeah if you have to ask me something then you can unmute it okay so monologue is one person giving instructions again this would be on general so normally in this section you get a map okay the map could be of a railway station an airport a theater a playground uh, it could be of a hospital it could be of a farm it could be anything so the person would describe the different places that are there on the map you have to give the answers based on what you are listening uh the second type of question again here you would get a diagram so the diagram could be of a plane the diagram could be of a boiler the diagram could be of any equipment or an object and the person on the call on the recording will give you instructions you have to label the diagram yeah so this is again in the general context but one person giving you those instructions and you have to answer 10 questions everybody clear on this yes ma'am great yeah part 3 part 
is again a conversation but here the conversation will be between more than two people okay so it could be maximum they give is four people on a call and here this becomes academic so your first two parts are general the third and the fourth are academic now when i say academic what do you understand when we say academic conversation what do you understand by it it will uh, be mostly related to the subjects or you know uh, anything which is related to academics in the sense anything which is related to subject it can be anything uh, now it can be chemistry it can be bio any subject but it can be anything yeah absolutely right okay so that means there will be a group of students discussing a lecture that just attended so the lecture could be related to history the lecture could be related to science the lecture could be related to environment the lecture could be related to uh, some species anything but it would be academic okay and all the four people would be giving you the answers so you have to be very very sharp enough to catch the answers all right yes and the last part that is part 4 will again be a monologue and here again one person speaking on the call but this again becomes your academic so again there is only one person but this one person can describe anything related to any subject okay and they'll give you 10 questions and you need to answer those 10 questions now there are types of questions that they'll ask you first let's understand are we have we understood till here what the structure is like it's a 30 minutes listening test paper based people will get extra 10 minutes to transfer their answers from the question paper to the answer sheet okay whereas people who are giving cbt that is computer based you get only 2 minutes at the end to check all your answers 40 questions okay there are four parts part 1 part 2 part 3 and part 4 so 40 questions are divided equally between these four parts are we clear on this yes ma'am any questions yep. anybody sure. no ma'am no ma'am clear oh great ma'am yes Uh, how many times uh, is there uh, uh, how many times uh, we can listen audio is there in possible unfortunately only once only once right yeah. also they will play the audio only once even if you are giving computer based it will be played only once you cannot go back and replay it okay now the types of questions that you will get they are very simple okay the first type is fill in the blanks all right and yes. here in the fill in the blanks you would have to give answers in one word two words or three words and or a number that means the the question now remember one thing very clearly you have to read the main question there it will tell you choose no more than one word and or a number choose no more than two words and or a number choose no more than three words and or a number sometimes they may not give you and or a number so what do you understand by this type of question uh like ma'am we need to uh, mention like uh, just one word over there like if say or maybe number like if they ask like how many person they attended the seminar hmm. so just we need to mention the number like when once we listen the recording correct there. so suppose uh, just taking your example how many people attended uh, they'll not say how many people there were x number of people who attended the seminar okay so let's say 10 and the question says no more than one word so how will you write it will you write it numerically or you will write it in words uh, ma'am both are i think correct it will go no okay no no 
No, I don't think so. I, I am not sure about it, but I don't think so. Both are correct. Okay, so tell me what is your answer, Varun? Right? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, Varun. Uh, tell me what would what would you write? Ma'am, so question is like question will be fill in the blanks with one and or a number. You said no, no. no the choose only one word. Okay, choose only one word. Then it's only ten, ma'am. Uh, I'll be writing it not numerically. I'll be writing it with the spelling T E N ten. Yeah. Correct. Okay. so because they have not mentioned and or a number the the uh, the new, the number you will write it in words not in numeric but if they in the question if they had written no more than one word and or a number then you could have used a numeric okay vivek that's that's what you need to be careful because yeah. we we don't want to lose one mark because one mark means your uh, band coming down okay because they have a bracket of those bands as well all right so this is one type of question the next type of question is mcq what is mcqs multiple choice questions absolutely multiple choice questions one statement four options you have to choose any yeah. of the options which is correct sometimes there could be only one option right sometimes there can be two options as well you have to read the question very carefully and then choose your answers okay ma'am so if there is multiple options correct then will it be mentioned in the question that yes. there are multiple yes yes it will be mentioned it will be okay yeah okay the next type of question i told you was a diagram or a map okay so you have to label the diagram and you have to label the map as well both you can either get a table to complete or a summary okay. all right again yes. here the cho cho choice of words would be 1 2 or 3 the fifth type of question you will get is a flow chart flow chart again would be short answers like one word two word three word answers only see in the entire 40 questions they will not go beyond three words they are objective type questions so you don't have to write sentences or anything you just have to write the word now the tip over here for everybody is always remember that before the blank and after the blank those two words are very important for you to get your answers right pay pay attention to those two words sometimes those words they will use as synonyms as well but the answer will be either after the word or before the word okay so this is what listening skills is all about okay and so and, huh. you mean to say that uh, we have to pay attention very carefully to the words mentioned before the blank Correct. and so, after the blank yes yes so that's when your answers will because they will stress on the answers and they will stress on the word also before the blank to get your answers okay, okay. and like i said sometimes they use antonyms and they use synonyms as well sure what you listen is what you're going to write in the answer mm -hmm. always remember that okay not what you understand that means uh if they have given a synonym and you know a similar word you can't use the similar word what you have heard that is what you're going to write all right yes uh next type of question is matching your matching is very simple they'll give you two columns and they will give you information in both those columns you just have to match them all right they are very simple questions the only trickiness lies on how a good listener you are why because we may think that you know i can focus and concentrate uh, very well in for 30 minutes but the good news is in today's day and time let me ask you the question before i give the answer what is the attention span of a human being how how long can we listen to anybody or how much can you listen to anybody give me a time how long the duration however interesting the topic is however interesting the person is however engrossed you are but what is the attention span that you can give the person on very good focused listening 
I don't think so. More than five minutes or ten minutes. I don't think so. Like above it. Okay. I tell you very frankly, five to ten minutes at max. Five minutes at max. I think. Okay, five minutes. What about others? Yeah, it's the like five or five to ten minutes maybe okay. because after five minutes you go on another. Uh, you you go on thinking something else. <laughs> okay. All right. Mm, yes, ma'am. Like ten minutes, fifteen minutes, not okay. more than that. All right, I must say that you all have really trained your minds that way. The good news is, one minute is maximum that you can listen to anybody, however interesting the person is or however interesting the time. Okay, now, how does it happen? But that is too late. No, one minute is right. <laughs> yeah, but that is the, that is what the reality is. Okay. many times you'll see that you know the person okay look at me the person is sitting like that and looking at you and they're nodding also their head like that in acknowledgement whatever you're saying that actually the person is not, not here. with you not yeah. yeah the person is somewhere else mentally somewhere else physically the person is with you but the mentally the person is somewhere else why do you think in today's day and age people are using different uh, methods different techniques to uh, grasp the attention of some people whom if they want them to listen focused i'm talking about focused listening and in ilts focused Active listening listen. is very important absolutely Correct. because you miss you'll miss the answer right and you will not get the opportunity to play the recording once again the problem is that okay now there are only two types of disturbance that happen one is the internal and the other one is external can you tell me the difference while listening what is the difference between internal disturbance and external disturbance internal means you're thinking some thing about you know you're not there you you you're thinking something and recording has been played and you're not there so that is very obvious that you will be not uh, listening to the things properly and then you might miss some of those external is like yeah that, that's my perspective i'm not very sure about it no problem yeah sure and external is external disturbance uh, eco problem or something eco <laughs> system problem <laughs> or somebody somebody disturb you like okay all right oh. okay. what about others What do you think is the difference between these two, internal and external problem? I mean, disturbance. Uh, ma'am, internal disturbance, as he mentioned, like you know, you are there, but your mind is not there. Okay. You're listening, but you're not, you know, actually listening. Okay. All right. And uh, uh, external disturbance, it could be like uh, your, you know, your headset is not working. Hmm. People they are making noise, hmm. and somebody is disturbing. Then you know your. a uh, focus actually somewhere else then okay it's so, very simple so. internal noise is all in your head right your thoughts okay so you may think what happened last night you may think what happened last evening you may think what happened 10 years ago you may think what happened so any thought can crop up at any given point in your mind in your thought when you're listening and concentrating very focused okay external somebody coughing somebody dropping something making noise now which is in your control the external or the internal internal ma'am yeah. internal yeah how do you control your internal thoughts just be there like be on the moment yeah. uh, react on the situation as it is coming to you accept it and go forward that's yeah. what you can so, do so so when when you are giving your ilts exam and you have 30 minutes to answer 40 question any thought that crosses your mind you have to just shoo it away because at that yeah. point in time you don't have to get carried away with that thought because if you get carried away with that thought you yeah. will miss out on the uh, on the recording that has been played and for exactly. you to get back on track with the person what they are saying it's going to take you a lot of time okay another thing always remember what is gone is gone don't think about it what i mean is you are concentrating and writing your answers and suddenly you miss the fifth answer okay, okay. forget about it don't even think about it 
because if you keep thinking what was the answer the fifth one the following answers your 6 7 8 9 10 10 gone because the recordings are fast the conversation is fast okay so this one thing you should be very very careful when you are giving your ilts listening test 30 minutes you have to forget that you exist in the world or anybody in the world also exists in your life after that you can do whatever you want to do all right now are the types of questions understood by everybody yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah? any questions yes. on the pad i have a i have yeah. a question ma'am yes. is there negative marking for no. wrong wrong answers no okay okay but always remember mm -hmm. if your spellings are wrong your answer is wrong yeah you can't say my half spelling is correct <laughs> my three fourth spelling is correct so they should give me one fourth mark no nothing yeah. it's either one yeah. or it's zero okay, okay? another okay. thing one more thing you all have to take note of is your singular plural the existence of this s in a yes. plural form very important if the answer has to be singular it has to be singular if the answer has to be plural it has to be plural as simple as that so they check your grammar and they check your grammar in this manner that grammatically the sentence is correct and the answer that you have given is correct or not so in your ilts you'll come to know the significance of s nowadays we write s any time we feel like mm -hmm. correct but in ilts you can't do that one more thing articles can can anybody tell me what are the articles e and a yeah, and the correct we now in our lives we put a and the wherever we feel like right uh, correct and sometimes we don't put also <laughs> yeah but yes. in ilts if you do not put the article your answer is wrong even if your answer is correct but the article is not there answer is wrong and specially this is for computer based because there is an algorithm that is there and the computer has been the answers have been programmed so the computer will not take acha ye bhool gaya hoga or like you know maybe chalo let's let's mm -hmm. uh, ignore it and give the marks in paper based at least the evaluator will ignore it but in computer they will not ignore it i have seen people losing marks over there in computer based okay so your articles are very very important from the grammar perspective in listening skills okay any other question no ma okay no, ma but i can tell you everybody can get a 9 in listening it's that simple you just have to answer 40 questions that's about it somebody is chatting with me somebody has a question okay all right so what i'm going to do is uh, most of my uh, students already have the book okay but the ones who do not have the book uh, i'm going to uh, give an activity to check your listening skills right now okay now the pattern of the ilts is they give you 30 seconds to look at your questions before they play the recording okay so suppose let's take okay. an example of part 1 so part 1 has 10 questions correct yeah yes so right. they will say uh, look at questions 1 to 6 and you have 30 seconds to do that so you can look at the questions okay. you can look at the blanks you can uh, memorize the question to whatever you want to do all right then they play the recording for you they'll stop the recording and they'll say okay now you have 30 seconds to check your answers so you can check your answers before they play the rest of the recording that is from 7 to 10 this is how the pattern works in the ilts actual exam okay has everybody got that yes ma'am yep all right yes. now the activity that i am going to do because i want to check your listening skills i will show you the question i will play the recording but you don't get that 30 seconds 
okay i want to see if you get the answers right without that 30 seconds all right ready everybody okay. uh yes yeah. okay so for people who have the book the soft copy it's page number 4 and the others i will just share the book varun you've got the book right yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah ma'am it's a handbook which you have provided yes, right yes 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 I sent you the soft copy. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Now. people do you all have a problem understanding accent different accent yeah anybody has a problem understanding accents mom uh, which accent actually they use for listening like okay. uh, british or australian british and american australian accent even when somebody is speaking face to face you will not understand so in ilts mostly it would be british it would be american or it could be canadian even on new zealanders actually but mostly it will be british and uh, uh, us american yeah mam you said page number 4 4 yeah Ma'am, is it about the guest room and all? Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. So just seeing uh, how to the audio. I'll be playing the audio to the computer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you all see the ones who don't have the book? Can you see the book? The questions. Yes, no, ma'am. Uh, right now, it's not yet. Yes, uh, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. We can, we can see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, great. Okay. So I will play the first track. Okay. And I told you that you should listen to. I mean, you should read the question. Okay, which is very important. playing the first track yeah yeah mom please if everybody mute yourself <laughs> thanks sir pallavi <laughs> yeah it's just loading huh track 4 can you all hear yes ma'am okay good morning i'd like to check in please do you have a reservation sir yes i do in the name of matthews let me just check how do you spell that m a t h e w s oh here we are room 226 Thanks. Would you like a wake-up call? Yes, please. What time? Um, about seven. Actually, half past should be all right. Fine. And the newspaper? No, thanks. I'll get one on the way to the meeting. Breakfast is included in the price, but you do need to book. 
so will you be having the full breakfast that's the cooked breakfast or the buffet or breakfast in your room I'll have the full breakfast, thanks. How do you intend to pay, sir? Um, Visa, American Express... I think my company's paying. Oh, sorry. That's fine, then. Okay, let's check your answers, okay? Okay. Yep. Name, name of the guest is already given, but now... One minute. Now, there is a new uh, update that is there in the ILTS listening test. They will not do the example. Okay? Okay. So they will directly start with question number one or blank number one. They will not do okay. example. Okay? So don't wait yeah. for an example. Room number? 226. Very good. Wake up call? 7.30 a.m. 7.30 a.m. 7.30 a.m. Who wrote p.m.? <laughs> Answer is wrong. <laughs> okay, Raja. I think that's Raj Kumar, no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Type of breakfast. Full. Full breakfast. Full. Yeah. Full okay. breakfast. Okay, okay. Now? And the company will pay. One From company. Pay. One minute. One minute. No, guys. One an answer should be one word, right? <laughs> answer should be one word. The type of breakfast should be full. Correct. Gaurav, you are you're right, Gaurav. That's what I was coming to. How many of you all wrote full breakfast? Answer. Only wrote full. I had written full, ma'am. Okay, then full. your answer is wrong because it's one word. Okay? So okay. your answer has to be only full, F-U-L-L. -L. Okay? Mm -hmm. Next yes. one. Payment by? Company. Company. Very good. Company. Very good. Okay, next one. Next track. Track five. Hello, Justine Cox speaking. Oh, hi, Mom. It's Ben. Just calling to say that this 6 o'clock train has been cancelled and we're now getting the 7.15, which gets in at half past 8. Can you pick us up from the station? Yes, of course. But can you do me a favour? Can you wait outside under the clock? Because I'll never get parked in the station car park. Sure. And, Mum, can you bring my leather jacket? Because it's absolutely freezing and I haven't got a coat. Right. Oh, and yes, I need to pay Charlie back for the train ticket. I had to borrow £13 from him, so could you bring that too? OK. See you both soon. Tra All right. First one? 8.30. 8.30, everybody? Yes, ma Yes. Yes, ma Very good. Second? And the clock. On the clock. On the clock. On the clock. Car park. Car park, ma'am. Car park. Okay. Uh, Rajkumar, car park, no. On the clock. No. Under the clock. Clock. Yeah, under the okay. clock. I have under, written under clock. Under clock, I wrote. <laughs> under clock is wrong English and no marks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Under yeah. the clock. Clock. Okay. Okay. And the last one? Okay. 13, pounds. 13 pounds. 13 pounds. 1 3 or 3 0? No, 1 3. We, we can write 13, one, three. right? 1 3. One, three. One, you can three. write it in numerics also. You can write yeah. it in words. Number. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay? All right. Now, next one. Remember, I told you before the blank, see what the word is? <laughs> so, in the conversation, did you hear that he said, Bring my leather jacket and I have to pay Charlie, yeah, which I borrowed. Yeah. So bring yes. 13 pounds. So you can see the words pay Charlie, bring 13 pounds would be your answer. Okay, yeah. so these yes, are important words you should remember. Okay, now next one is a completion of a table. Okay, can you see okay. of a city aquarium? Yes, yes, ma'am. So type of ticket is one column. 
cost is another one advantage is the third one and requirement is the fourth one okay so the first answer a uh, first uh, blank is in cost second is in advantage third is in the type of ticket uh, fourth is in the requirement fifth is in advantage and the sixth is in the requirement so listen very carefully to the conversation okay how many words uh not five two words and five. a number two mm. words or a number more than two words and uh, and a number correct i'm playing the track track 7 Good morning, City Aquarium. Georgina speaking. Oh, hello. I'd like some information about the cost of visiting the aquarium. Certainly. I'm thinking of bringing a group of people to the aquarium. What would be the cheapest way of doing that? Well, you have a couple of options. The standard price for a ticket for a child is fourteen dollars. Okay. But they must be under fifteen years of age; otherwise, they rank as an adult, in which case it would be twenty-seven dollars for a single admission. Right, I see. Well, they're all over fifteen, I'm afraid. So it would be the adult entry fee then. But the good thing about this ticket is that there's no booking required. Yes, that's an advantage, but I think that's a bit expensive for us, quite honestly. Is it possible to get a student concession? These people are all studying English here at the moment, and they're on a bit of a budget, if you know what I mean. Yes, students can get in for nineteen dollars a head. Oh, okay.、Uh, that's about a thirty percent reduction, isn't it? I suppose that's not bad when you think about it. To be eligible for that price, they do need to show a passport. Okay, I'll remember that. And do I need to book if I'm bringing a group? How many of you are there? Why are there group prices as well? Oh yes, if you have a minimum of ten people. So how much does that work out at? Well, there's a flat fee of two hundred and fifty dollars for a group of ten. Um, that's even more expensive. Yes, but you do get the added benefit of a guided tour. Yes, I'm sure it's very interesting, but it does still seem to be quite pricey for our students. Um. Also, I should tell you that if you want to come as a group, you'll need to buy the tickets in advance. Right. Look, I think we'll just come down on our own. All right. First one. Twenty-seven dollars. Everybody got twenty-seven dollars. Yes, yes, twenty-seven dollars. Very good. Yes. Second, second answer. No booking required. No booking. 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 Because it's two words. Correct. Absolutely. So Varun, if you write no booking required, then the answer is wrong, because、oh. no more than two words. Okay. So the answer is only no booking. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Third one. Ah,、uh, ma'am. Student. Sorry. Somebody had something. Ah, third one is what? Students. So is it with an S or is it without an S? It was without S. Without S. No, it is with, with S. S. Without S. No, with S. With S. So you, if you write without S, your answer is wrong. Wrong. Okay. Okay. So students, you have to write. She's very clearly mentioned students. Okay. Yes. And fourth、yeah. one requirement.、Uh, Passport. 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 Correct. Correct. Fifth one. Ah,、uh, guide. Guided tour. Guided. Guided tour. Guided tour. Guided tour. Yes, sir. Guided tour. And the sixth one. Advance. 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 In advance. In advance. I told you. In advance. In advance. Yeah. Yeah. If you just put advance, answer is wrong. So you have to、oh. pay in advance. Okay. 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 Hello. Next one, okay. It's again fill in the blanks with、uh, no more than three words, okay.
Track 8. Can I give you a word of advice? Yes, sure. Well, for $4 you can buy a copy of the guidebook and that basically has all the information in it that you need. It has a full plan of the aquarium and information on all the different fish. Oh, what a good idea. Yes, you can get a copy at the gift shop here. Do you know where that is? Is it near the entrance to the building? No, not exactly at the entrance. It's actually beside the cafe. Oh, I think I know where you mean. Thanks. I might pop down this afternoon and pick one up, and then I can give the students my own little tour. What time do you close tonight? We close at 6pm most evenings, but this evening we'll be open until 7.30. Thanks very much. I should be able to get down there after work. And one last thing. Yes? If you buy your tickets on the internet, you get a discount of 10%. Gee, that's worth knowing. Thanks a lot. Okay, first one. Four dollars. You can buy a book that tells you about the four dollars in the aquarium. No, 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 no. Full plan. Full plan. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Full plan. Full plan? Oh. What? You can full buy plan. a book yes. that tells you about the full plan in the full aquarium? Yeah. Think again. Full plan answer is wrong. About the plan in the aquarium. <laughs> okay. Still it's wrong. <gasps> About the tour, tour in the aquarium? No. No, 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 no. About the Plans. tour plan. It tells you about what? The fish. Yeah. You buy, you can buy a book that tells you about the fish in the aquarium. Fish. And fish she says, the... and she says fish. She doesn't say fishes. Fish. Fish. Okay. So the answer is fish. Okay. Next one, second. The gift shop oh, is the cafe. 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 Everybody got the answer cafe? Yes. Okay. yes. Anybody wrote besides the cafe? No, no, no. No, no, no. no. Next to the cafe. Yeah, it's next to the cafe. Very good. Because beside and next are both the same. It's similar. Okay. Yes, ma'am. The aquarium closes at? 7.30 p.m. 7.30 p.m. Yeah. PM. Correct. The tickets are cheaper when you buy them. Uh, on, internet. Internet. On, internet. On, internet. on internet. On internet. On internet. On internet. Yeah, correct. Okay, now this is something interesting, okay? Can you see this? Yes. What do you think this diagram is of? Spring like it. Spring. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is spray. Raja, but what is the diagram? Spray. Yes. <laughs> this diagram is of a fire extinguisher. Fire yeah, extinguisher, fire. yes. Okay. So yes. now you have to label the diagram. That means the parts of the fire extinguisher. And it says okay. the diagram has to be labeled with one word only. Okay. Now I'll play the recording. The person will give you the information. You have to say what is the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth answers are. All right? Listen to it very carefully. Track 10. Every home and office should have a fire extinguisher. Although there's a good chance that it will sit on the wall for years collecting dust, it could end up saving your property or even your life. So, what does a fire extinguisher consist of? The main part of the extinguisher is simply a large metal container that is cylindrical in shape, rather like a bell jar. In the past, these used to be red, but nowadays they come in many different colours. The container is full of water or some other substance, such as foam, that can be used to smother a fire. At the top of the container is a lever, and attached to the lever there is a thin extended pin that goes down into a gas cartridge. This looks rather like a small bottle or flask, and is right in the centre of the extinguisher. Below the lever... There's a curved handle, which is used to hold the extinguisher and direct it at the fire. 
On the other side from the handle, there is a horizontal nozzle that opens when the lever is pressed and emits a jet of water. At the neck of the container, there is a small coiled spring that holds the pin in place and this is connected to a long tube which runs from the spring to the bottom of the container. This is called the discharge tube, which is where the water comes out of the extinguisher into the air. Okay. Yes. First one. Metal container. Container. Oh, container. Sorry, container. Yes. Only container. container. Yeah, only container. container. Second. Lever. Long, long one. Long, long tube. Tube. Long tube. 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 No. 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 Tube. Can you see? Tube. Can you see there's a pin that is coming down? It's yes. a pin. It's a long pin. Okay. Okay. Third one. Cart a handle. Yes. Yeah. Cartridge. No. Curve the handle. handle. Pin. Uh, pin lifter, I think something. No, no. Curved handle. So the answer is handle. 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 Yeah. Uh, handle. handle. Yes. Yeah, Fourth one. I didn't. I can't get it. <laughs> I didn't get it. Gives off gives off jet of water. Jet. Jet. Jet of water. J e t jet of water. Okay. Jet of water. Jet of water. And the fifth one. Discharge. What? Discharge. Discharge tube. But one word, no. Discharge. This tube 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 tube. No. tube. <laughs> the answer Discharge. is. The answer is correct, discharge tube, but you have to put a hyphen to make it one word. Okay. You know, you put a no, dash in between tube. two words. Yeah, Just grammar, okay. you know, that the hyphen is put between two words to make yes, it one word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Here, yes, ma'am. Over here, okay. you have to put discharge hyphen tube, which will become one word. Okay, now why is that done? Because the emphasis of discharge is important when you write it. This cannot be done for every word. In, in grammar, when the second word doesn't emphasize too much, the previous word brings the meaning to the second word. And that's the reason why hyphen is used. Okay, got it everybody? Yes. So the answer is discharge hyphen tube will become one word. Okay. okay. Now next one. I'm just saying, ma'am. Actually, yeah. there is some disturbance, you know. Which yeah, I don't know. Things are which... Guys, if you go on mute, please. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's still, still it's there. Okay? Yeah. Better? Sure. Yes, Next one. It's a continuation of that same fire extinguisher. Okay? Track 11. A fire extinguisher can quickly put out a small fire before it spreads. First of all, take the extinguisher out of its case and pull out the safety pin. Nothing will happen when you do this. It just unlocks the extinguisher. Holding it by the handle, point the extinguisher at the fire or whatever is burning. Then all you have to do is to press the lever at the top of the container. This pressure causes the long pin to move down into the gas cartridge. As it does this, it releases gas into the upper part of the cylinder. The gas then forces the water in the main part of the container up the discharge tube and out of the nozzle, producing a jet of water which can put out burning materials such as paper and wood. Okay, sixth one. 
anybody got ma'am, that ma'am pin uh, pull out safety pin safety pin yes safety pin is the pin. answer safety okay. pin okay then seventh one unlock and unlock ma'am. unlock the no no point the extinguisher at burning material burning object point you are going to point the extinguisher no to douse the fire okay. okay so when you pull out the safety pin it just unlocks the fire extinguisher then point the extinguisher at burning object so the answer is point okay okay eighth one um press correct press press, press. press. yes yes then ninth into the gas into the no yes, which releases. gas ah uh, releases. releases which releases gas okay the answer is releases releases and the 10th one point jet of water no point nozzle at dash to <coughs> extinguish discharge uh, burning yeah. material correct pallavi burning, burning material Where did you all go wrong? Everywhere you went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It's fast, ma'am. <laughs> only, only two are right, ma'am. Not even two, like Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I told you, you have to keep those yeah. keywords in mind. Okay, then yeah. you'll get your answers. A big <laughs> gas is your answer, right? So obviously, what will happen? Which releases gas? No. Yes. Correct. even in the first one withdraw withdraw is not what they said he said pull out so withdraw yes. pull out is a synonym for withdraw understand mm. yes so yes. they will use synonyms and antonyms when they are giving the uh, in the recording so you have to be very careful okay yes next one okay your uh i will this entire recording is going to be till uh the seventh one till 5 to 7 okay so your first uh recording will be on the multiple choice question then circle two letters a to g for your answers then the third fourth and then 5 to 7 okay it's a continuation um, Track twelve, question one. So, how did your first week of architecture go? Not bad, but Monday is incredibly busy. I've got three two-hour lectures that day. Really? What are they? Well, we start with construction at ten o'clock. That's really just engineering theory. Then I have an hour off to go to the library and catch up on some reading, and at one o'clock we have a lecture on computer-assisted drawing, <laughs> and that's learning how to use computer programs to help you design buildings. No time for lunch then. <laughs> no, exactly. And we finish the day with a lecture on history. Whoa, that is a full day. Question two: You will hear a man telling a group of hikers what to take on a bushwalk. Now, we recommend that you get yourself a small bag to carry your supplies in, but please not a heavy rucksack. The lighter the better. Make sure you wear a good pair of hiking boots with thick socks. You'll need a decent-sized plastic water bottle that can be easily refilled. Don't bring cans of soft drink as they don't quench your thirst. And we'll be stopping for a picnic lunch, so please bring sandwiches or fruit, that sort of thing. And we recommend a wide-brimmed hat. To protect you from the flies, which can be pretty irritating at this time of year, you may need some hand tan lotion too. And of course, I cannot forget uh, your binoculars. Yes, ma'am. Disturbance. Oh, sorry. What happened? Ma'am, ma'am. Voice is cracking. Okay, I'll play it again. Okay. Ma'am, ma'am. Sure. Aya, uh, we didn't hear anything. Disturbance. Okay. Second one is quite disturbed. I will. I will play it again. Don't worry. Question one. So, how did your first week of architecture? Is it better? 
Yes, ma'am. Go? Not bad, but Monday is incredibly busy. I've got three two-hour lectures that day. Oh, really? What are they? Well, we start with construction at 10 o'clock. That's really just engineering theory. Then I have an hour off to go to the library and catch up on some reading. And at one o'clock, we have a lecture on computer-assisted drawing. <laughs> and that's learning how to use computer programs to help you design buildings. No time for lunch then. <laughs> No, exactly. And we finish the day with a lecture on history. Whoa, that is a full day. Question two. You will hear a man telling a group of hikers what to take on a bushwalk. Now, we recommend that you get yourself a small bag to carry your supplies in. But please, not a heavy rucksack. The lighter, the better. Make sure you wear a good pair of hiking boots with thick socks. You'll need a decent-sized plastic water bottle that can be easily refilled. Don't bring cans of soft drink, as they don't quench your thirst. And we'll be stopping for a picnic lunch, so please bring sandwiches or fruit, that sort of thing. And we recommend a wide-brimmed hat to protect you from the flies, which can be pretty irritating at this time of year. You may need suntan lotion too, and of course... Don't forget your binoculars, because the view from the top of the mountain is fantastic, but you won't get the full benefit if you're just wearing sunglasses. Question three. In what way are sharks different from other fish? Well, for one thing, they have to keep moving constantly. And that's not the case with other fish? No. Bony fish can stay still because they have a kind of bladder which keeps them afloat, but not sharks. Basically, they're heavier than water, you see, so if they don't keep moving, they sink. Is that so? And another interesting thing is that they can't swim backwards, though they're not alone there, actually. And we've recently discovered that even though they're big, they can still leap into the air from really deep water to catch their prey, things like seals. But they have that in common with other large fish. Wow, they're pretty awesome creatures, aren't they? Question four. The Chibao Center is a magnificent building that symbolizes the existence of the Kanak people, the original inhabitants of the islands of New Caledonia in the Pacific Ocean. It was designed by the world-famous Italian architect Renzo Piano and was opened to the public in 1997. The center itself is based, in every detail, on the layout of a traditional Kanak village, made up of three sections which contain exhibition spaces, a library, as well as conference and lecture rooms. It's surrounded by beautiful gardens and is naturally ventilated with many spaces open to the elements. Questions 5 to 7. I've always been interested in plane spotting ever since I was a little kid growing up in Holland. I think I just like the look of them, you know? How each airline has a different tail to identify it, like a flag. I used to go to the international airport with my dad and we try to see every plane in an airline's fleet. They each have a serial number, though it's quite a job to see them all. And I love seeing planes from unusual places, even though I don't really want to go there myself. I also like souvenirs from planes, and I get my friends to bring me things whenever they fly anywhere. I've got tray tables and knives and forks, and I've even got a seat belt. I take about 7,000 photos of planes a year, and I'm often down here at 5 in the morning to catch a shot of the plane's landing. You're not actually supposed to get too near the airfield. You should be 3 meters away from the fence. Quite often the patrol cars come round and tell you to move away. But I love the sound of the jet planes. The louder the better for me. I've never flown in a plane, you know. I'm actually scared stiff of flying. Okay. First one? A, B, C. Ma'am, A, B, C. B. 
technical design b b is the answer b technical yeah. b then second one you have to circle two okay b so which which are the answers b and d b and e b and d b and d b and d okay b so b is the water bottle okay the drinking container which you can refill cold food is the sandwiches and sandwiches uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so b and d then third one b b, b correct b, fourth yeah. c b no c. a no. a in the beginning only he says it's the original Native. of yeah the new caledonia now the b it's a unique example of italian architecture no it was not an example he said that there was a famous architecture who designed it okay yes. okay and the c is not there because it is not the place to learn they were just describing the kanak culture okay then 5 to 7 d a d f adf yes everybody yes the answer is a d and f okay now next one uh this uh, clip is very fast huh? so you have to really pick up quickly the answers track 13 Paddling around on a river in a small boat is not everyone's idea of fun and it can sometimes be a lot riskier than you think. But more and more people are getting involved in this new sport and taking their boats onto dangerous rivers to enjoy what is called white water canoeing. Canoes, which are narrow boats to start with and usually hold only one or two people at the most, are particularly well known for being unstable and turning over in the water. Cynthia Barton, one of Britain's top canoeists, talks about what the sport is and how to get started if you're thinking of taking it up. All right. First answer. First uh, C. C. C is becoming more popular. Correct. C. Second. Get going. Balance. 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 Correct. Balance. B. She uses the word unstable. Okay, it's difficult Balance. to. Yeah, correct. So it is B. All right. Next one. Again, multiple choice. All right. Okay. Track fourteen. A lot of people may be familiar with what I call recreational canoeing. That's where you take a canoe out onto a nice calm river with a picnic and have a relaxing time. But if you're doing white water canoeing, then you're doing something very different. White water canoeing actually gets its name from the fact that when you do it, you've got to be paddling very rapidly through the water. And when you're doing that, you make a lot of froth and bubbles and the water looks white. First of all, you will need to think about equipment. You'll need to get yourself a good canoe and these can set you back anything from 500 pounds to 1500 pounds depending on the material they're made of. Personally, I wouldn't go for a cheap one, although obviously this depends on your budget. And to protect yourself against rocks when you fall out of the canoe, and believe me, you will fall out. You'll need a good quality helmet. It needs to meet certain government standards, so make sure you go to a reputable supplier. And there's no point, particularly as a beginner, in wearing anything but a wetsuit. That's a must. I'd recommend one with short sleeves rather than long sleeves. Then you'll have to get a life jacket too and I would also suggest that you get yourself a pair of river shoes. These are made out of the same material as the wetsuit. Some people think that ordinary rubber boots will do, but they're much too loose and fill up with water. It is also essential to wear something to protect your hands from the paddles and stop them from being rubbed. Okay. First one B 
B. Correct. B, B is the B. answer. Yes. Two to four. B G B C D G B B C D B C D G. Yeah. Tell me, Pallavi. C D G B C G B C G. Okay. What about other? Uh, B C and D. D for Delhi. B C and D. Okay. B C D. Okay. B C D. The answer is G C D. B for Bombay, D for Delhi, and G for Glove. I mean, G for Goa. B D G. B B D G G. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she very clearly mentioned no. The wet suit should be with short sleeves. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. She never mentioned yes. gloves, but she said you should wear something hands. to cover right. your hands. Protect yes. your hands. Yeah, because it gets rubbed against the rock or something like that, right? Okay. Next one. Track 15. The popular rivers are, in fact, graded from one to six in the same way that ski runs are graded to tell people just how flat or steep they are. Once you're an expert, which can take some time, you can, of course, try anything. And really serious canoeists who want a real challenge go out a lot more in the winter when the water level is high and deliberately look for the most dangerous rivers. Whatever you say about this sport, it is never dull. Generally, it's a fantastic sport for the track. Fifth. Okay, what's the answer? A, B, C. A, A. Correct. A is the answer. All right. Now, next one is a map. Can you see the map? Okay. Yeah. Now, whenever you're attempting a map. There are two three things you should remember. One is they give you the clues in the map. So the clues over here would be like now if you're looking at this, it's a uh, it's a map of an Australian airport. Okay, so can you see from the city? That means you have to keep your eyes and the person on who is giving you the instructions will begin from there. From the city, all right. Then you can you see the two arrows, one going straight and one going to the right. You have to mark yes. that as well. Yeah, ma'am. Okay. Then there is a walkway. They will mention these words: walkway, bus stop. Okay. And can you see the navigation compass over here? Yes. Not, that is also important. Can you see the uh, diagrams of the plane? Where G is, there is only one plane. Where there is F, I think uh, it's F or B. One second. Ha. B. A A A has three planes. So what does that tell you? A is the international departure, and your G and A is more domestic. Okay. Now they're asking you that label the plan. Write the correct letter A to H. That means you have to find out where the car park is. Is the car park H? Is the car park F? Is the car park E? You have to write that in front of that. Where is the domestic terminal? Where are the lifts? And where is the regional terminal? So you have to write the letter in front of the word. Got that, everybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So yeah. Your, your clues are your words: walkway, bus stop, from the city, navigation compass. These you have to keep in mind. Okay, so I'll play the track for you all. Ah, uh, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, you told about international uh, flights and the domestic flights. Ah, huh. yeah. So you to like you told them on the basis of the question, or you just told them uh, on the basis of your view on the map. No, no, no. See, where, where? Uh, see, domestic terminal. It's not so busy. So when you have an international airport, your international departures and arrivals are going to be more. Okay. Okay. So obviously the planes will be more, right? So okay. over here, if you see A, there are three planes. Yes. Correct. 
whereas b and g there is only one one plane that means yeah. that's the hangar that's the domestic domestic terminal a okay. is the international terminal okay, okay. that way yes. Track 17. The airport has three terminals which are joined together to form one large building shaped rather like a crescent. If you're coming from the city by car, you'll see a big cargo building on your left as you approach the airport, and then the car park is a rectangular building beyond this. You can park your car there and then make your way back into the terminals using the pedestrian walkway. For those who arrive from the city by bus, there are two bus stops at the airport. If you are flying to a city within Australia, you should get off at the first bus stop opposite the first building on your right. This is the domestic terminal, where all the flights to the major cities within Australia leave from. If you are going overseas, you will need to go to the international terminal, which is in the centre of the complex, so get off at the next bus stop. This terminal has a long, narrow concourse leading down to the departure gates. When you walk into the international terminal through the main entrance, you'll find yourself in a large hall where you check in for your flight. The toilets are on the left side of the concourse, and there are lifts leading up to the next floor on the right. You'll find a variety of restaurants and bars on the first floor, and shops selling clothes and souvenirs. But remember, there are strict hand luggage limitations, so don't buy more than you can carry in one bag. If you are flying to one of the small country towns, you will need to go to the regional terminal at the north end of the airport. Facilities are limited in this terminal, but there is a small cafe where you can buy sandwiches and wait for your flight. To hear this information again, press 1 on your keyboard. Okay. It was pretty simple, okay? Let's see. Yeah. Where is the car park? E. 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 Very good. Where is the domestic terminal? G. G. Very good. G. Very good. Yeah. Where is the uh, lifts? D. D. Very good. And where is the regional terminal? B. 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 Very good. Got it? This is how yes. you will attempt the map. Yeah. Yes. And you will get full marks over here, okay? Sometimes there are four, sometimes there are five marks in a question like that, okay? It wasn't it easy? You just have This one to, was easy, yeah. Yeah, you just have to follow the instruction of the person who is uh, helping you to find those uh, answers. So I would say 90% of your attention should be to the recording. And 10% on the diagram. You'll never go wrong. Okay? Next one. This is very simple. It's a summary. Okay? Track 18. Excuse me. Could you tell me how to get from the Jing'an Temple to the Peace Hotel? Um, yes. The best way to get from the temple to the hotel is to take the metro. It's really much faster than taking a taxi or a bus. You travel two stops and get off at the People's Square. When you come up to street level, you just walk along Nanjing Road East. Oh, yes, I've heard of Nanjing Road. Is that the pedestrian mall? Yes, that's right. So there's no traffic there, which is good. The mall is packed with people and there are all sorts of shops to see there. New buildings, old buildings, you name it. Anyway, at the end of the mall is an area called the Bund and the Peace Hotel is on the left-hand corner of this. There's a pedestrian tunnel which runs under the Huangpu River, known as the Tourist Tunnel, and the entrance is just outside the hotel. The tunnel comes up at the Oriental Pearl Radio and TV Tower. 
which is one of the most famous landmarks in Shanghai. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, first one. Metro. 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 Correct. Metro. Second. People Square. No. Oh, no. Two stops. Two Mall? stops. No. Two stops. Two stops. stops. Okay. Third. Traffic. 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 Very left. good. Traffic. Fourth. Left. Uh, left. 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 Left hand corner. Corner. Left hand corner. corner. Left hand corner. Okay. Then the fifth. Just outside. Just outside. 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 Yeah. Okay. Next one is your multiple choice again. Track 21. One. Jamie, what did your tutor think about your essay on wildlife conservation? Oh, I got quite a good grade, but there was a long written comment at the end of it. Yeah, I got one too. He said I could have spent more time on the background. Yes, me too. I should have done a bit more reading. I left out all that stuff about polar bears, which is pretty important, I guess. Mm. He said he liked the fact that I'd used lots of statistics to support my argument. Two. I'd like everyone to prepare a presentation for the tutorial sessions throughout the semester. Are you going to give us a list of topics, or can we choose our own? It's up to you to come up with a suitable topic, as long as it's related to the course. What if we all choose the same topic? Should we get together as a group to discuss this? No, but I'd like you to make a time to come and discuss it with me personally, so that I can see if you're on the right track. Wouldn't it be easier to just give us a list of topics? I think you'll find my suggestion allows you more flexibility. Okay, first one? B. B. No. B. C. 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 Statistics. Yeah. Statistic. Data is statistics. Statistics. Yeah. Second? B. B. Yes. Yes. B. Okay, next one is matching. Okay, so you have multiple choice. If you see, there's a whole list of courses on the right and then you have to match it against the advantages. Okay, so the courses are more and the advantages are less. All right, so you have to choose. This is given only to confuse you. So listen very carefully. Track 22. What are you hoping to study at university? I'd like to do medicine because even though it's very competitive to get in, I feel it's a really worthwhile profession and I think you'd always find yourself employed, whereas I'm not so sure how useful a straight science degree is these days, unless you want to be a chemistry teacher. Yeah, that's possibly true perhaps, which is why I'm hoping to study law. Because I feel with this degree, you can go in any direction. Mm. You don't have to be a lawyer as such. There are lots of different areas you could work in. But, you know, if you're a dentist, then that's what you are. You're a dentist. And what happens if you find out you don't like the work after all those years of study? What about you, Stan? I'm aiming to do... Lang